Does having more megapixels really mean better portraits? Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we'll be going over three different cameras, each with different quality specs and megapixels, and see if using the most expensive camera with the most megapixels really means better portraits. And I know some of you guys may already know the answer to this, but to those who don't, spoiler alert, the answer is no. And if anyone is just starting off with photography, I do hope you guys find this video encouraging. I know that using the most expensive gear is not the most important thing, but what really does matter is the idea going into the photo, which really creates the feeling and aesthetics to your image. And even if your exposure is not the best, the idea can still shine through. And to me, this is way more inspiring than seeing a nicely lit photo with no idea. Idea. So we'll be taking portraits with each of the cameras and then doing side-by-side -side comparisons of those portraits so you guys can see if the most expensive camera with the most megapixels really means better portraits. And to begin, we'll be starting with the Instax 300. So an example to show you guys my point, I have my brother's Instax camera which I've never actually used and there's no settings for me to change my exposure so once I take the photo that's how it's gonna look and I can't even edit that. So I want to show you guys with this camera how a photo taken on this can look so much better than a highly edited photo. So me and my friend Alexa shot this retro ducks jacket at a vintage looking liquor store and because I was shooting with the Instax 300 film camera it added even more to the 90s vibe of this shoot. One thing we tried to do was use the environment there, so I got a couple shots of her sitting on the rail. These are coming out so good, I'm gonna be an Instax photographer now. Then for the second shot, I thought it'd be cool to have her standing and leaning on the rail while I took it from a side angle. And then for the last shot, we changed it up and used this ice cooler for the background. And now by looking at the results, to me these look sick. One thing I really liked about shooting with the Instax camera besides the cool vintage look it gives is that it makes me a lot more cautious of each composition since I only get 10 shots per film pack. Now for the next camera we'll be using the iPhone XR which has 12 megapixels and to help me with this shoot is my friend Lizzie. We shot at this pink building and to go with it we paired it with a simple pink jacket and white top. So for this photo, I did turn on the flash and then I got an over the back pose with these really cool lights in the background which added to the colors of the outfit. And then we switched up the angle and tried to get a few photos of her leaning on the wall. And for the last shot, I really like this angle because it placed her in the middle of both of the lights which I thought looked really cool. And here are some non-edited photos that I took with the iPhone which I think look really good. Now, now for, the for the last, last camera, camera, the beast, beast itself, the Sony, Sony a7 III. So for these portraits, I had my brother wear a super simple outfit and we went to our neighborhood park and used that as our background. The reason why I'm shooting this is to show you guys how bland a portrait could look even if you take it with a high quality camera. It's a great quality photo but it still looks kind of boring. So we switched up the background and used this tree just to make it a little bit more interesting and I did really like the greens and the lighting is good but still it's not the most interesting photo at least to me. So now we'll be comparing all the portraits taken with each camera so you guys can see how having more megapixels or the most expensive camera doesn't necessarily mean better portraits. Like the overall vintage theme in this first shoot really helps set the tone to create those sick portraits. And the similar color palette in both the background and outfit in this second shoot with Lizzie also helped make those portraits just a little bit more interesting than the last portraits that we took in the park with the Sony a7 III. And I don't want you guys to think that the Sony a7 III is terrible, so I took it to each of my shoots and here are all the photos taken with the Sony in each of these locations. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and once quarantine is over, I'll be making a part two on things that I like to do when I'm taking portraits, which I hope helps you guys as well. And I want to give a thanks to Kurt who inspired these portrait tutorial videos coming soon. And that's it for today guys, I hope to catch you guys on the next one, alright, peace.